Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, we're going to make a table runner. We're going to use a pattern from Cozy Quilt Designs. It's called Charm School. All we need are some charm squares and a background fabric. So let's take this over to the studio and get started sewing. The first thing we need to do is pick out 52 of these squares that will show up nicely against this background. So the background we're using is kind of gold and it's blue showing in the pattern here. So I wanna make sure that the squares I pick won't blend in too much with the background. So I can see right away these nice gold ones, they're beautiful, but they will not give me enough contrast against this background. So I'm gonna set those aside and not use them. All of the rest of these will look good against the gold. Now we're going to iron all of these in half, just in half one time. So fold it on its diagonal, give it a little steam, and that's all you need to do. Now we're going to get our background fabric ready. We need one and one eighth yards. Iron it up nice and flat, and then cut it according to the pattern directions. Now we're going to pin these folded squares onto the background. So we're just gonna match up all the edges there and we're gonna put four of them on, one in every corner. And you see they overlap just a little bit and that's, that's good. The last square you wanna tuck under the corner under your first one there. Then line everything up and put some pins in so they will stay in place while you sew. The easiest way to keep these in place is to just baste around the edge one eighth of an inch from the edge. This is just a long basting stitch just to make everything stay in place so that when we get all these squares done, we can stitch them together without these corners moving. Look at how fun these blocks are. They're three, di they're three dimensional, so each one is open here so it's a lot of extra fabric here and that's going to give the runner a lot of really nice texture when it's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and make up the rest of my blocks with my triangles there. I have all the blocks made. These are really fun to sew with. I really enjoyed the whole process. So I've got it all laid out and it's pretty balanced so that I've got the the lights and the darks not meeting up right next to each other. And I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna sew the rows together. So I like to just pick it up in order and take it right over to the machine so I can stitch these together. What I like to do is flip this whole stack over and put it on my lap. And then the one that's on the top, that is going to go over there. The next one, I'm gonna flip it and it's gonna fit right there. So if I just do that every time, my row will stay in order. Now we're going to stitch these together with a quarter inch or maybe even slightly deeper than a quarter inch seam allowance since we have so many layers. I really recommend a little deeper. Very easy stitching. Now we're just gonna get the next block and it's gonna fit right here. Now I'm just going to trim off the pointed end of the runner here. We've got a little bit more than we need. I have the top all done. Now we're ready to put together our quilt sandwich. So I've got the back laid out here and I'm the back is wrong side up. I'm gonna put the batting right on top of it. So this is the same procedure you would use if you were putting a quilt onto a quilting machine. We're just layering everything up. We put the quilt wrong side down on top of everything and we flatten everything out. And then I'm gonna put quite a few pins all the way around the edge.
I have pins all around the edges and some pins in the middle here to hold everything in place. And I like to trim off most of the excess before I quilt it because it just gets in the way and I don't like to have to work with all this excess. I'm going to baste all around the edge of the quilt here, or the runner. I'm just, I want to get rid of all these pins that are holding it around the edge and this is just an easy way to do it. There, now the edges are all anchored down and we want to pick a thread color to quilt with. Here's some thread options. Now I'm mainly going to be quilting in the ditch between all these fabrics. I'm not going to quilt on the gold part. I'm going to leave that open and I'm not going to want to quilt on this part either because I want this three-dimensional effect to stay. So I really think that green will look the best. Brown would work, but I've got a green back. So I think I'm going, going to use green on the top and on the bottom. I'm going to start quilting in the ditch all the way down the center of the runner here. So I'm going to back tack at the beginning. And I'm just going to hold the fabric open and have my needle right in the ditch. Now I'm just going to quilt all the short seams here. And you can start off the edge because that's going to get caught in the binding. So this is all we have to do and then the quilting will be done. I like to cut my binding two and a half inches wide and then I've got it just folded in half here and ironed very nicely. Before we put the binding on, we want to trim the extra backing and batting so that everything is nice and straight and trimmed there. That makes getting the binding on really easy. I always do all of the binding steps on the machine. I never do any hand binding. I would love to, but I really don't have the time. So we're gonna stitch this on using a quarter inch seam. And we're gonna go all the way around and I'll show you how we turn those corners that are not quite 90 degrees. So I'm getting near the corner. I'm gonna to wanna to sew to a quarter inch from the edge there. So I'm gonna put my pin and just hold it there. And when I get close, I'm going to move out of the way, and then I'm going to back tack. Now take the quilt off of the machine. Now we're going to turn. So this is a 90 degree corner. We're all pretty much familiar with these. We're going to fold the binding here, and then we're going to fold it back down there. Now here is what you have here. You have a little flap that will go back and forth, and there's a quarter inch right here in the corner. There's a quarter inch from the edge. And that quarter inch is critical because when we come to our corner that's not 90 degrees, we're going to use that same quarter inch. So start sewing right where that pin is pointing there. I like to point the pin there, move it out of the way, and then sew. Now for this non-90 degree corner, if you drew an imaginary line right in the middle of the angle there, that is where we're going to want to sew to, to right there. So I'm just gonna put my pin in there, make sure my binding is lined up. So I'm gonna stop sewing right there. And I'm gonna back tack. So we're going to fold it again. The angle's a little bit dif different this time. And then fold it back. And what we want is, I wanna be pinching a quarter inch so that we've still got this little flap that's going back and forth. And we've got a quarter inch in it here and this side is lined up there. So right where it's flapping there, that's where I'm going to start sewing, right there. So you can even hold that pin there, slide it over, get that right under where the needle will go, move your pin, and then start sewing. Then continue on the straight. Once you have the binding on, you just want to finger press this, pull it open and finger press all the way around. Now take your binding and fold it over the edge of the quilt to the back of the quilt. So we've got about a half inch showing there. And I'm going to stitch right in the ditch here and it's going to catch the binding on the back side. 
now that I'm coming to this non 90 degree angle here, let me show you how to turn this to the back side. So go on the far side here, not the side you were just sewing on and fold it over. And just make that straight in a straight line with that and then fold that back a little bit. And sometimes you have to move this fold a little. I've got, I'm going to take a pin and just pull that out so I get a nice straight angle here and everything is meeting at the bottom. Then I'm just going to flip it down and sew. Pivot when you get to the corner. Keep going. Now we have nice binding all the way around there. The Charm Square Runner is all done. It was so much fun to make and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I love that these are all loose. It just gives the table runner a lot of texture and dimension and the binding really finishes this off very nicely. Here's the green that I used on the back. It matches, but it's a little bit different because sometimes I flip my runners over and use that side also. So it came out 17 by 70. It's nice and big. And as usual, Cozy Quilt design patterns are just a breeze to follow. Thank you so much for watching our tutorial today on how to make the Charm Square Runner. I hope you enjoyed it. Now we're gonna have another giveaway. We're gonna give away a quilt. We're going to give away this nice snowball quilt. This is made with a Moda Fabrics collection called Wild Nectar. Really cheerful and fun. So it's a big throw size and it's real easy to enter. Just follow the link below that says giveaway. Enter your email address and your name and you might be the lucky winner. Remember, it's open to everyone worldwide. Good luck.